Have you ever looked at your flock during a brutal polar vortex and thought, they could be better? In our last video, we met the Queens of the Cold, the Chanticleer, the Brahma, the Orpington, and the Wyandotte. They are extraordinary animals, yes, but nature rarely gives us absolute perfection in a single package. One has the size, but lacks laying speed. Another has the perfect plumage, but its feet struggle in the wet mud of a thaw. Today, we are not going to settle for what exists. Today, we are going to take a step that few backyard breeders dare to take. We are opening the doors of our experimental laboratory to answer the forbidden question. What happens if we take the best of each and fuse them together? We are not going to review what you already know. We are going to reverse engineer biology. We are going to take the genetics of these champions and mix them to see if we are capable of designing the ultimate bird. A chicken that doesn't just survive the winter, but laughs at it. Get ready, because what you are about to see are not simple photos of breeds you can buy at a hatchery. These are projections of what you yourself could create on your homestead, if you understand the rules of the genetic game. We are going to dismantle DNA, combine combs, plumage, and bone structures, and visualize the results of these epic crosses. This isn't theory. This is advanced poultry architecture. Welcome to the lab. Let's begin. To build the future, we first have to understand how the foundations of the past were laid. And I want to start by revealing a historical secret that changes the way you see your birds. A few days ago, an expert subscriber left us a comment that sparked this entire video. He reminded us that the Chanticleer, that Canadian marvel we talk about so much, didn't just magically appear in the snow. It was manufactured. It was a deliberate design. Almost like a chemical formula. In the early 20th century, Brother Wilfred didn't settle for the breeds he had. He visualized a need and designed a solution. Today, we are going to reverse engineer his master formula. If you wanted to recreate a Chanticleer from scratch right now, or if you want to understand how cold hardiness genetics works, you need to understand this five ingredient recipe. First, he took the dark Cornish. Not for its eggs, which are few, but for its architecture. He needed a wide chassis, hard bones, and a muscular breast that could retain core heat. Then, he introduced the white leghorn. This seems counterintuitive. Why put the most cold-sensitive bird in the world into an arctic mix? For the engine, he needed to inject the ability to lay eggs non-stop. The third ingredient was pure American power. The Rhode Island Red. To bring that rustic vigor and disease resistance that only the Reds have. The fourth step was crucial. The White Wyandotte. Developed right here in New York State. And here is the genetic key. Wilfred needed to eliminate the single combs that froze and turned black. By introducing the rose comb genetics of the Wyandotte, he managed to flatten the head of the future Chanticleer. And finally, he closed the formula with the White Plymouth Rock, a Massachusetts icon, to soften the temperament and fix the large size. The result of this five-way mix, after years of ruthless selection, was the Chanticleer. But why stop there? Poultry genetics is not static. If Brother Wilfred could do it a hundred years ago with the tools of his time, Imagine what we can project today. Let's start our first crossing experiment. Imagine you live in the northern Midwest, the Dakotas, or maybe upstate Maine. Places where the cold isn't just a nuisance, it's a deadly threat. Where the wind cuts like a knife and the temperature drops to 30 below zero Fahrenheit. Your number one priority is to armor your birds against frostbite. We have two candidates that are already good. The Chanticleer, with its cushion comb, and the Wyandotte, with its rose comb. But what happens if we cross them? Let's visualize the result of crossing a white Chanticleer rooster with a silver-laced Wyandotte hen. Let's talk about head genetics first. When you cross a rose comb, which is genetically dominant, with a cushion or pea comb, a fascinating phenomenon occurs called gene interaction. Often, the result is not a halfway mix, but a new type of comb called a walnut comb. This structure is even smaller, rougher, and tighter to the skull than the parents. By making this cross, we would be creating a practically invulnerable biological helmet. The surface area exposed to the freezing air would be almost zero. Now let's visualize the body. The Wyandotte brings a spherical shape, like a ball. The Chanticleer brings dense, tight musculature. The resulting hybrid would be a compact fortress. By eliminating any sharp angles on the body, we reduce the surface area where heat escapes. It would be a round, solid, heavy bird. And finally, the color. Here is where aesthetics meets function. The white of the Chanticleer is usually dominant, but it often allows underlying patterns to leak through. By crossing it with a silver-laced Wyandotte, the first generation of offspring would likely be mostly white, but with a ghostly or dirty silver effect on the neck and tail. 
However, if we work this cross into a second generation, we could fix the spectacular laced pattern of the Wyandotte onto the ultra-tough body of the Chanticleer. The result of this experiment is what I call the Arctic Fortress. An animal designed purely to survive where no other bird could. If your problem is frostbitten combs and wattles in January, this is your definitive cross. But not every homesteader lives in the Arctic. For many, the problem isn't just the cold, but the need for volume. We want a chicken that feels like a living heater, and that, at the end of its life, serves as a massive feast for a large family. Let's move on to the second experiment. Let's merge the two heavyweights of the poultry world. We are going to cross a buff Brahma rooster with a buff Orpington hen. Here we are playing with two very different types of thermal insulation. The Brahma relies on dense, tight plumage with a very thick inner down layer. The Orpington, on the other hand, uses volume. Its feathers are loose and fluffy, trapping large pockets of warm air around its body. What happens when we combine both strategies? Genetically, we are looking at a phenomenon known as hybrid vigor, or heterosis. By crossing two breeds that, although similar in size, have distinct genetic origins, the offspring tend to be bigger, stronger, and faster growing than either parent. Let's visualize this hybrid, the snow mammoth. The first thing we would notice is the size. We would be producing animals that could easily exceed 13 or 14 pounds for the males. But the most interesting thing is the coverage. The genetics of the Brahma's feathered legs is incompletely dominant. This means that if we cross it with a clean-legged Orpington, the chicks will have feathers on their legs, but not the excessive amount of a pure Brahma. They will have what we call booties. This is a huge technical advantage. The full boots of the Brahma can accumulate ice balls and mud, which is a serious problem. By reducing the amount of feathers on the toes thanks to the Orpington genetics, we keep the heat in the extremities, but drastically reduce the risk of ice blocks forming on their feet. As for the body plumage, the combination of the Brahma's density with the Orpington's fluffiness would create absolute thermal insulation. It would be a bird capable of sleeping on the snow without melting it, because its body wouldn't lose a single degree of temperature. Plus, since both parents are buff, the offspring would be a uniform, visually stunning golden color. This cross is ideal for dry, windy, cold climates. It is a wall of feathers and meat. Now let's be honest. There is a complaint I hear constantly from backyard keepers. My purebred heritage chickens are beautiful and handle the cold, but they eat like dinosaurs and lay very few eggs in winter. It is the eternal dilemma between hardiness and productivity. Heavy breeds have a slow metabolism. We are going to try to solve this with our third experiment. We are going to perform a bold cross, almost industrial, but focused on the family farm. We are going to cross the egg-laying machine, the white leghorn, with the king of the cold, the chanticleer. Many purists will say this is a mistake, that the leghorn is useless in the cold. But genetics tells us otherwise. The leghorn has a fatal flaw for winter, its giant comb and thin body. By crossing it with a chanticleer, we are applying an immediate genetic correction. The chanticleer's cushion comb gene is dominant over the leghorn's single comb in terms of size and shape. In the first generation of offspring, we won't get giant combs. We will get moderate or small combs, much safer and more functional. We have eliminated the leghorn's Achilles heel in a single step. But what we are really looking for here is the winter machine. The leghorn brings unmatched laying persistence and a very efficient feed conversion ratio. The chanticleer brings the bone structure and the ability to retain heat. The resulting hybrid would be a medium-sized bird, much more agile and active than a Brahma or an Orpington. It would be a chicken that goes out to forage in the snow instead of waiting by the feeder. Visually, it would be a compact white bird with a lively gaze and firm musculature, but its true beauty would be in the numbers. While a pure heavy breed might give you two or three eggs a week in winter, this hybrid has the genetic potential to maintain a rate of five eggs a week, even with short days, thanks to the leghorn's metabolic drive. This is the cross for the pragmatist. For the homesteader who wants to fill egg cartons in December while spending less on feed, it's not a showbird, it's a high-performance self-sufficiency tool. And I want to propose a fourth scenario, one that answers the aesthetic curiosity of many. What if we want color? What if we want colored eggs in winter? Let's think about crossing one of these hardy breeds, say the Wyandotte, with a blue egg layer, like the Amerikana. Here we enter egg color genetics. The blue egg gene is dominant. If we cross a Wyandotte rooster, which carries brown egg genetics, with a blue egg hen, the daughters will lay olive green or army green eggs. But beyond the egg color, we would be creating a winter olive egger. The Wyandotte would contribute the cold-resistant body shape and the rose comb, which adds to the Americana's pea comb to make an ultra-tough walnut comb. The visual result would be a hen, with the beautiful patterns of the Wyandotte, perhaps with the muffs and beard of the Americana, 
capable of withstanding severe freezes and gifting us colored eggs when the whole landscape is white and gray. It is the perfect combination of utility, resistance, and beauty. What we have seen today in this virtual lab is not science fiction. It is the reality of how genes work in your coop. The pure breeds we admire so much are, in reality, just snapshots of a moment in genetic history. They are stable points on an infinite genetic map. Brother Wilfred was not afraid to mix five different breeds to create his masterpiece. You shouldn't be afraid to experiment either, provided you do so with responsibility and respect for the animal's health. Backyard genetic engineering, or selective breeding, is the most powerful tool you have. You are not limited to what the hatchery sells you. You can observe your flock's deficiencies and design the solution. Are your chickens cold? Introduce Chanticleer genetics. Do your chickens eat a lot and lay little? Introduce Leghorn or Rhode Island genetics. Do your chickens suffer from foot issues in the mud? Introduce clean-legged genetics like the Wyandotte or Orpington. Now I want to know your expert opinion. Of the experiments we simulated today, which one would you take to your homestead? Do you prefer the armored safety of the Arctic Fortress? Do you lean towards the massive size of the snow mammoth? Or are you one of those who prefer the pure efficiency of the winter machine? Leave me your vote and your analysis in the comments. I read and learn from each one of you. To your success, my friend. Until next time.